So she is a financial advisor, okay, with uh, Synergy Financial Advisors, but she is someone with prior experience in t film and TV, okay? So she actually was a bona fide producer writer, okay? She produced content for local and international channels. And better yet, before it went away, she actually line produced a 35 millimeter film. When I say 35, actually it was shot on 35, okay? It just doesn't happen anymore, sadly, okay? Her work experience as well as her relationships with professionals in the field has helped her to understand the needs of the industry. And now as a qualified financial advisor, she works closely with media professionals and companies to meet their business and personal insurance needs. Please put your hands together for Peeling. Uh, I want to thank Ian for this chance to speak to all of you. Okay, I used to work as a producer some years back. And uh, as a producer, I know how difficult and how expensive it is to get insurance for the production, uh, as well as for the crew. So later on, when I got my insurance license, I spoke to my good friend, Gek Lee San over there. Okay, and then she said, hey, you have to do something about it. You have to do something about the insurance uh, for media people. So what I did was I met up with a few of the insurers that I work with, and, um, and I'm glad to say that I have some good news to share with all of you. Okay, um, insurance consist for, consists of protection for your business. Um, that means insurance plans like professional indemnity, public liability, uh, work injury compensation, equipment insurance, um, as well as personal insurance. So what I'm going to be talking about today is actually personal insurance because of the time constraint. Um, so I call them my insurance FAQs because uh, these are some of the questions that many freelancers and companies um, have asked me before. Okay, so FAQ number one. Most production houses and freelancers purchase travel insurance. And just now, uh, Bertrand spoke about travel insurance. When traveling overseas for shoot, does travel insurance sufficiently cover your persons and belongings and where are the shortfalls? Um, I think travel insurance is something that uh, we all know about because it's a very common product. And uh, before you go on your holiday, you know, okay, I need to get my travel insurance. But what does it really cover? So um, this is what I extracted from an existing travel insurance plan, which is what it commonly covers. And the main item would then be the medical expenses. So usually you will see that um, um, there is a high limit for medical expenses just in case you meet with a, a severe accident or fall very sick overseas. This is what is meant to cover your, um, all the expenses that you spend in the hospital for surgery and so forth. Um, and also there is a hospital allowance. That means that for every day that you stay in the hospital, um, you get a certain amount of money. And um, the fact that there are limits, it means that you, um, you are not, with, um, on the occasion that you go beyond that limit, uh, the insurance do not cover. Now, okay, the, the standard feature of medical expenses is that it covers uh, up to seven days after your trip. Now, this is something good for you to bear in mind. In such that, let's say if you had stomach ache and you had food poisoning, or if you catch a flu overseas, but you are not in time to see a doctor there. And then when you come back to Singapore, what do you do? Go see a doctor. Okay? Because uh, what happens is that if, if you see a doctor within seven days of your trip, you'll be able to make that claim. So what you do is you have to keep the original receipts, provide the doctor's memo. Doctor's memo is important because it has to show that you actually fell sick while you were overseas, the cause of your illness. And then um, the fact that you have to keep and submit original receipts means that you can claim only from one insurance policy. Okay? Because you're not supposed to, to make a profit from your medical expenses. Okay? So you can only claim from one insurance only, even if you have multiple insurance policies that covers medical expenses. Okay, one thing for you to bear in mind when it comes to your travel insurance is that uh, it pays on reimbursement basis which means that you do have to pay first and then you claim later on with your original receipts. Okay, so um, <clears throat> there's only one main implication, is that in case where the bills are large, let's say if you stay, stay in the hospital for a long time uh, because you had an accident or because you were really sick and you needed surgery, um, paying first can be challenging because you have to 
fork out the money on your own. If you are a, a frequent traveller, I think that happens to some of us, whereby you go overseas and you may be overseas for months and you work on sets and um, <clears throat> there is something called an international medical plan um, that may be more applicable to your needs. Because in an international medical plan, uh, it will pay for your medical expenses without uh, you having to fork out the money. So the insurance company will pay the hospitals directly. So that might work better for you if you are a frequent traveller and you can spend long periods of time overseas. Okay, the next thing to, to look into is in travel insurance it is actually the personal belongings. Okay, um, in your travel policy, you'll probably see something like this. Okay? There is a claim limit. Let's say if you were to lose your luggage and there are important items inside, okay, that um, there is this baggage and personal effects uh, compensation and the maximum compensation that you get is actually $800 for any one article okay, or, or a pair or a set. So then if you were to travel with your camera set and your lenses and you have a set of lens in there and you know that these are expensive things, okay, you, would, you, you, you probably would know that all your articles will exceed this limit. Okay? Um, and the other thing that you've got to take note of is also the laptop and mobile phone. Okay, because I know some of you will, will then be bringing your laptops, you'll be doing your edits while, while on the fly. So these are things that you bring along with you when you travel and do take note that there are claim limits to them. Claim limits apply regardless of the actual value of the items that's lost or damaged. So it may be a, a $20,000 camera, a few thousand dollars worth of lenses, but what you do get is subjected to the limits that you see. So do, do be careful when it comes to travel policies because there are claim limits. So if you're carrying equipment, okay, such as camera lenses, sound kit, or expensive uh, mobile devices, laptops, um, you, what you do need to get is actually a dedicated and specialised equipment insurance, which later on uh, Kelvin will be talking about. Okay, I, I think some of us have heard of, um, <clears throat> have heard that um, as, as a crew, when you go overseas, uh, when you go overseas uh, for filming, that you're not covered by insurance, that travel insurance doesn't cover you. So, um, why is that so? Why, why is that, that rumour going around? Now, the thing is because in travel insurance, uh, because these are generic products that, that goes across all industries, you'll find that there is always in your policy uh, a list of general exclusions. And this is one of them. Uh, and if, you, if you see that there is, it mentions that manual workers uh, means a person engaging in tasks that involve physical exertions, regardless of whether any machinery or tools are used, and when such person is remunerated for the work done, are excluded from, from the cover when they are, while they are at work. Um, the other one that may be pertinent to this industry uh, is something on aerial photography. Okay, so this you will find in the general exclusions of most common uh, travel insurance uh, plans. And what happened is that um, most insurance companies, uh, because they are, un they are not very familiar with the risks uh, in the media industry, they actually classify film crew as manual workers, because they think, oh, it's hazardous work, you work with explosive, there are stunts, there are things that are set on fire, and so forth, okay? So that is why uh, <clears throat> they will think that, okay, this means that media workers, uh, sorry, media professionals, would then be uh, considered manual workers, and would therefore be excluded. Okay, so this is quite unfair, right? So, um, what I think is that it's important that everybody should be covered by travel insurance okay? uh, while you are working overseas because that's what other, but that's what other people get. Uh, so what, what, what I did, what me and my, my, my team did, uh, was that uh, we actually went to Tokyo Marine, uh, which is a very established insurance company, internationally very well known. And uh, we actually, I, actually I, I talked to them and I told them, hey, this is what we do. We're not... We're not working with explosives all the time, you know. 
uh, and, and we don't do stunts. And I don't think that uh, the, the fact that nowadays equipments are smaller, lighter, and we do watch out for, for safety and we're trained in what we do, um, that you should cover us. So, so this was what, we, what uh, I said to them. So uh, of all the insurance companies that I spoke to, um, Tokyo Marine responded well. So they are willing to extend their cover uh, to film crew okay, uh, during work at leisure at standard rate. So um, this is good news for us because it, uh, the fact that they're willing to just charge a standard rate uh, for travel insurance, uh, it means a lot of cost savings and you know that you can be protected. Okay, so, um, and uh, just, just a suggestion that if you do travel more than three times a year, you'll find that if you were to buy single trips for all your, uh, for all your work trips, <coughs> uh, the cost will actually be a lot higher. So um, an annual plan may work better for you. Uh, the premium starts from uh, $160 per person per year. So I thought that this uh, uh, would actually give you the protection that you need, uh, knowing that when you go overseas, uh, for, for your filming, uh, you can be covered. Okay, now uh, to the next FAQ. Uh, what's the difference between travel insurance and personal accident? I, I get that question sometimes from, from people. Okay, can I make a claim from both? Okay, now with travel insurance and personal accident, you'll find that there are certain overlaps. Okay, uh, so I will not bore you with all these details, but what happened is that uh, with travel insurance, you will find that um, it covers you when you fall sick overseas, when you get injured, uh, when you're disabled, uh, and um, it also covers you for, for all your travel contingencies. So that is why people get travel insurance, because it's low cost, and because it covers a, a whole host of things. And because travel insurance is a very generic product that everybody gets, therefore the, the premiums are very low. So, um, but for personal accident, uh, the difference is that it doesn't cover you when you, when you fall sick. Okay? Um, unless, nowadays there are products that cover you for certain conditions. Okay? So, so I know some products cover for like uh, food poisoning and there are some infectious disease that are covered. Um, but the thing is that if you are um, involved in an accident that results in broken bones overseas, and you are covered by both your travel insurance and your personal accident, uh, and there is a provision for lump sum payout, you can actually claim from both. Okay, so um, are, there, are there overlaps between the two kinds of policies? Yes, okay, but essentially they are also uh, very different. Okay? Because when you come back to Singapore, uh, your travel insurance will cease. Of course, you, it only applies when you are overseas. Uh, but your personal accident insurance uh, it, it, will, it will cover you 24-7 whether you're working or whether you're at, at leisure. Okay, now uh, the third FAQ. Uh, there are many different personal accident insurance plans in the market. Okay, is there a cost-effective one for media professionals uh, with varying risk, risk exposures? Okay, I, I've met many uh, uh, media professionals and, and some of them have told me that okay, for the work that I do, uh, when I go to my insurance agent, I can't find personal accident plans for me uh, because they say that my work is too risky. So I went to the insurers with this exact same, uh, same question. Why is it that you don't cover us? So, um, okay, when you look at a, a personal accident plan, okay, you'll find that the premiums are actually set uh, according to occupational class. Okay, so the higher the occupational class, the higher the premiums because they think that hey, you're in a more risky work. Okay, so for example, um, class one would then be the indoor, non-manual work. Like, let's say if you're an admin assistant or you're a nurse. Okay? So class two would then be uh, outdoor, non-manual. Like, let's say, for example, you're an engineer, you do outdoor sales, so you'll be in class two. So you pay a little bit more for your premium. In, in class three, uh, are for people with, who work outdoors and use tools. Uh, or machineries that are non-hazardous. Okay, so for example, a chef or a technician. So you pay a little more than class two for your premiums. Okay, so there is also a category called the referred risk, uh, whereby let's say 
the, the insurers cannot classify how risky you are, so they need to know, okay, what exactly is your job description so that they can craft out uh, a personal accident plan for you and, and, and set the premiums. So, um, and then there is also the decline risk where they look at your occupation and they say, okay, I, I don't want to cover you because I don't, know, I don't know how to assess your risk or this risk is too much for me to cover. So um, the, the not so good news is that there are insurance companies um, that classify film crew as referred risk or decline risk. Okay, so maybe they say, okay, you are a steady cam operator. I think that's very risky because the equipment is heavy and so forth. Because they don't understand uh, uh, what exactly is your job scope. What happened was that uh, we met up with uh, Tenet Sompo, which is a leading Japanese insurance company. And um, they said, when, when we told them, okay, this is what uh, film crew actually do on set. Okay, so <laughs> it was quite interesting. We, we, we had a meeting with them, and then um, I had this piece of paper, and I drew for them stick figurings to show what people actually do on set. Okay, I said, oh yeah, this is a holding area. Not everybody is on set all the time. Uh, we, uh, we res not everybody touches the camera. Um, only professionals are are able to handle the lighting, they're like, oh, okay, okay. So it's not as dangerous as, as what they, they perceive to be. So uh, after that meeting, they actually brought down the risk classification of uh, media professionals. So, um, so they, they actually rated editors and other indoor professionals um, as class one. So which means that you are in the same risk classification as uh, nurses and admin clubs, okay? because they think hey, there's actually not a lot of risk in what you do. So why should your personal accident plan be causing so much more? So um, then producers and directors, you're actually in the same risk classification as uh, outdoor sales because they say, hey, yeah, you do, you, you go outdoors, but you don't handle equipment. You're not, in any, you're not doing anything dangerous. You don't handle tools. So then in crew, uh, they rate it as class three because you do handle some tools, um, but they are not hazardous and they're not very heavy. So I thought um, that's actually very good news for us. Okay, because then the premiums are a lot lower um, than what most crew actually do pay uh, for their personal accident. And personal accident is uh, very important because we all work on sets long hours. Okay, so, so I felt that um, it's, it's the lowest cost way of insuring yourself doing work and off work, uh, and it covers you locally, overseas, it's worldwide cover. Okay, um, next question is about Medis MediShield. Does it cover everything? Health insurance, okay? So um, the, new, the new buzzword nowadays in health insurance is, oh, MediShield Live, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna come next year, what's gonna happen, right? So um, the few things that you have in, that, that, that you can know about it is that, um, you actually don't have to apply for it, okay? It, it comes uh, and it covers everybody. Okay, and pre-existing conditions are covered. I've met crew that had injuries on their bodies and they're no longer uh, insurable. Okay? So I thought uh, this is actually good news. Okay, um, there's lower co-insurance, which means that out-of-pocket uh, costs can be lower. Um, premiums are fairly, uh, fully payable by MediSafe. Uh, but one thing to take note of is it's designed to cover expenses in B2 and C class. Okay? So there are some things that I felt that we should all be thinking about because I think medical insurance is a very personal thing. Okay? Because you, um, you, you, want to, you want to know what kind of treatment you'll be receiving if you were to fall sick. Okay? So um, as a self-employed, for, for those of us who are self-employed, okay, how will you pay the premiums? Okay? Uh, it will be slightly higher than than the existing MediShield. Um, have I set aside emergency cash in case the medical bills uh, goes beyond the claim limits? Okay, because for every item, there are claim limits to what you can claim from your plan. Okay? So do you have emergency cash if that happens? Okay, will you prefer an A-class ward or private hospital when that happens? Okay? Uh, will you be seeking TCM treatment, acupuncture and all that, which is not covered? Okay, uh, by, by, by your shoe plan. Okay, going back to the question, uh, does it cover everything? Okay, um, MediShield provides basic cover for hospital expenses. Okay, um, therefore, if should severe injuries or illnesses occur, 
you will likely incur other expenses that stretches beyond your MediShield plan and uh, rehab expenses as well as um, your daily expenses. Okay? can be thousands of dollars a month. Okay? This is something that you need to look into, especially since you'll be unfit for work and have no income if you're hospitalized and if you uh, are injured. Okay? So, uh, which brings us to the next question about disability income. I think some of us have heard about disability income insurance. It's something that is very popular and very common overseas. Okay? Uh, why is it important to media professionals? Okay, I think most media professionals are trained in very specialized skills where the dexterity of a certain part of the body is very important. Like for example, if a sound recordist loses his hearing, okay, uh, a video editor, editor loses control and can't move the fi his fingers, a DOP fractures his master arm, injuries uh, do not happen all the time, but we can't say that they don't happen at all because we do hear about it. Okay, so what will happen is that you will find that disability income insurance can be something that that protects you when that happens, okay? Because it gives you a monthly payout to replace your income when you're unable to perform the duties of your profession, okay? Uh, payout will last till the day you're able to work in your profession or until you reach retirement age. Okay, in the case that you return to work, that can only take on a job of a lesser role and which means lower income. Let's say, for example, you, used, you were a DOP, but after the the accident or the illness, you could only take on a lesser role. Maybe you could only be a CA. So then um, you will continue to receive benefits from your plan. Okay, uh, the unique features of disability income insurance is that it protects and replaces your monthly income so that you can continue to meet your financial obligations, which all of us do have, like your housing loans, your bills, your kids' education. Um, and the payout is triggered when you're medically certified to be unable to perform your specific occupation. So if you're, if you're a director, you cannot perform your role as a director. If you're an actress, you can't perform your role as an actress, and so forth. So in a way, um, stress injuries, accidents, illnesses, mental incapacity, whatsoever the trigger might be, um, you don't need to meet with an accident, you don't need to stay in the hospital, or be severely or permanently disabled to qualify for the payout. And um, it's popular among highly specialized occupations, especially overseas, and now, uh, this insurance actually is available in Singapore. Okay, so in summary, travel insurance needs to cover you while you're at work or overseas. And uh, personal accident, accident insurance is low cost and give you the basic protection that you need. And be sure that your hospital and surgical plan, your shield plan, suits your needs and preferences. There's something for you to think about. And disability income insurance replaces your monthly income and especially catered to your profession. So yeah, uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kayden.